What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Buster Bookie Show. Today is Sunday, July 7th. We're back with our guy, Spindoc. If you're not familiar with Spindoc, he's on here every single Tuesday, Saturday, and Sunday. He did miss yesterday, but he will be with us typically on those days. Coming in with a VIP record of 145 and 103 now. Very impressive. Up plus 33.16 units on the year on his VIP. If you'd like to subscribe to his VIP, you can do that by contacting him on Twitter. I'll leave the link down below for that, um, also up top. And uh, yeah, you know, as I always say, Spin is analyzing all of his plays up until the final lineups are announced. So make sure if you want his best plays, you do sign up for his VIP. He's been killing it. If this is your first time here, welcome to the Buster Bookie Show. What we do here, we give you the opportunity for a $40 giveaway. If you'd like to qualify, all that you need to do, number one, subscribe to the channel. You can hit it right now. Number two, comment below. Four, and oh, give us the good vibes that we need to sweep the card. And number three, like the video. If you do all that and we sweep, I will cash up somebody. I'll send you 40 bucks. We went three and one on the show yesterday. Three and one on the show the day before. We are super close. We're excited to have Spin Doc back with us. What are your thoughts before we get into today's play, Spin? Uh, this is a good card. There's a lot of number one, number two starters going, uh, most of whom we're talking about here. So, and it's also Sunday moving day. And Sunday moving day can bring a lot of different things to think about, um, especially when it comes to lineup construction. So the ones that I did pick are the ones where, um, as you said, I'm typically analyzing all the way up until lineups are released until almost until the first pitch. Um, but uh, these are ones where I projected that lineups probably aren't going to be too different and, or, or there'll be nominal changes where it won't matter. But um, Sundays are always what are we call moving days. And so it's when series uh, that teams are playing end and teams will be traveling or other teams, new teams will be coming into town. So it's just something that you have to take into consideration. Um, you do, you can tend to see more overs uh, for strikeouts on a Sunday, which um, I'm assuming uh, you'll, you'll, will be made abundantly clear to you when we go through these plays. I love it. Let's do it. Let's jump into it. First play we're talking about Baltimore Orioles, 56 and 33 on the year, taking on the Oakland A's who are 34 and 57. They've had a tough season. This game's at 307 Central Time, and we're talking about the righty Grayson Rodriguez. He's having a very solid year, 10 and 3 record, 3.45 ERA, 97 strikeouts, a 1.22 whip, and we're looking at a strikeout line of six and a half. What are your thoughts on Rodriguez? All right. Well, um, the uh, well, well, first of all, Oakland uh, blew the doors off of Baltimore yesterday. Uh, Nineteen to eight was the final, and it wasn't even that close. It was actually uh, seventeen to nothing for a while. Baltimore did use a couple arms out of their bullpen pretty extensively. Uh, uh, Cole Irvin is actually a starter, but he's a long reliever, so he won't be available today because he threw four innings. Uh, Dylan Tate threw uh, uh, Dylan Tate threw two. So, really, uh, the Orioles today are going to need Grayson to go a little bit of a distance. Um, they have used a good number of bullpen arms recently, and it's set or it it shows in his outs prop. Uh, Grayson's outs are normally set at either 16 and a half or 17 and a half, but today they're at 18 and a half. And I would not be surprised if he goes longer than that. Grayson has talked openly recently about how to start the year. Uh, he's actually worked with his, or talked with his uh, uh, pitching coaches and trainers, et cetera about how to start the year he was in I want to strike everybody out mode and he was trying to paint corners trying to paint edges trying to throw those perfect pitches whereas when you look at the guy's pitch mix um his forcing fastball averages 96 miles an hour and so he can just rear back and just blow it by guys uh, his change up curveball slider pretty traditional mix there but the the way that this correlates is Grayson does operate in the zone 
uh, over 50% of the time. MLB pitcher average is 48.6. The reason why that matters is he's probably going to have to operate in the zone a good amount today because of what I just mentioned with Baltimore using a lot of innings from their bullpen and from their long relief guys. So how that correlates is over the last two weeks, Oakland's contact in the zone has been one of the worst in baseball 82.2 percent compared to a league average of 85.8 his changeup is one of his primary put away pitches to either lefties or righties um, primarily to lefties but he can use it for both and when you go up and down this lineup for oakland uh there's just tons of whiff potential to the changeup you have uh, Rooker, who should be in, who whiffs at 42.5% of the time. League average is about 33. You have uh, Blade, who's at 40. You have uh, Diaz, who's at 50. I, I mean, I could just go on and on and on. So this number is definitely not too big. Right now, you can get over six and a half at minus 140 on bet MGM. That's easily playable at this stage in the game. Other main books have it in the minus 150 to minus 155 range. That's right at the limit of the juice that I would pay. Uh, Another option that you can do is you can just bet one unit straight and just take a little bit of a reduced payout if you want less risk on the juice side. But look, Grayson's got to go deep today. Grayson has a lot of stuff that matches well with what this Oakland team swings and misses at. And Grayson also um, has has kind of a new mindset about him, about going after hitters and attacking them and not trying to be so cute and dance around the zone. It shows because he struck out eight against Seattle. He struck out eight against Houston. He struck out six against Philadelphia. Um and uh, 10 against Boston, I mean, so on and so forth. So it's really changed his perspective. So over six and a half is very easily playable for me as the first one. I love it. Lock it in. We're taking over six and a half for Rodriguez as the first play of today. All right, moving on to play number two. We're looking at the Diamondbacks, 44 and 45 on the year, taking on the Padres, who are 49 and 44. This game's at 310 Central Time on the Roku channel. You guys get that? Congrats. We're looking at Dylan Cease on the year. Dylan is seven and seven with a 4.24 ERA, 130 strikeouts, which is fourth best in the league, and a 1.12 whip. We're looking at his strikeout line also at six and a half. What are your thoughts on Mr. Dillon? All right. Well, there's a term in stock investing called buy the dip. And that's what we have here. We have a great buy the dip opportunity. So you go back and you look at Cease's home starts this year, uh, and you see that he's had nine, 10, eight, nine, and eight. Now you can say, okay, fine. One of them was against the Rockies. They strike out against everybody. That's fine. But some of the lower strikeout teams in the league have really just been mowed down against this guy at home, such as the Yankees, such as the Nationals uh, had nine against Washington, who is a team whose swing profile, uh, meaning what percent of the time they swing inside the zone, outside the zone, et cetera, is actually very, very similar two ceases. Now, the one thing about the Diamondbacks that they will do is uh, they're actually pretty patient when it comes to chasing pitches, but they will swing pretty aggressively in the zone. Um, So, uh, and and when they do, their contact can be up and down. Um, The other thing that uh, comes into play here is uh, Cattell Marte, who is one of their, who is one of their starters, Um, was, did exit Friday's game due to injury, did not play last night. Um, not sure if he's going to play today. Uh, if, uh, I had to guess, I would probably guess that he won't. He's in the projected lineup right now, but it really doesn't make a difference because I talked about the, uh, zone swing here and what Cease does very, very well, um, is he does get whip percentage inside the zone. So overall, uh, for MLB pitchers, the average percentage of contact when they throw a pitch in the zone is 82%. Cease is down at 77. Um, so that that 
parlays very, very well with what the Diamondbacks do from a swing perspective. Uh, if this were any other team in Major League Baseball, almost, this would probably be a seven and a half. In fact, Cease has been uh, set at a six and a half two times this year. Once was against the Nationals, once was against the Yankees. Both of those teams have very, very similar swing profiles where they don't chase very much. They can take early pitches. They have no problem going down uh, a strike or even down like one, two, so or, or so on and so forth in the count. And he just torched both of them. Um, he torched both of them for nine. And when you go and you look, especially at some of the bottom parts of this lineup, this, this Diamondbacks lineup, um, when you get to guys like Eugenio Suarez, when you get to guys uh, like Perdomo, there are strikeouts to be had. So uh, to me, this Dylan Cease at home should probably be a seven and a half under most circumstances. But uh, we get a chance to buy the dip today. That's what we'll do. Over six and a half is minus 110 on DraftKings. That's where we go. I love it. I think we're getting good value here. We're taking over six and a half for Cease as the second play of today. All right, moving on to play number three. We're looking at the Blue Jays, 40 and 49 on the year, taking on the Seattle Mariners, who are 49 and 42. This game is also at 310 Central Time. And we're looking at the righty George Kirby. On the year, Kirby is 7-6 and six with a 3.32 ERA, 101 strikeouts, and a very impressive .98 whip, 7th best in the league. And we're looking at his strikeout line of 5.5. Take it from here, Spin. All right. So George Kirby is one of the most efficient pitchers in Major League Baseball. Uh, it's not uncommon to see in the middle of a start for him that he's in like the fourth inning with like 28 pitches. Um, he he attacks the zone at fifth with 52.3 percent of the time, which uh, is well above pitcher average uh, and also uh, goes and uh, can get some zone whiff. Uh, zone contact is only 79.9 percent. He relies. Uh, he's a he he's a big dude, uh, six foot four, two hundred and fifteen pounds, and relies on primarily a four seam fastball that can reach up in the upper nineties, and then a wipeout slider. Um, if you've never watched the guy pitch and he's got his slider working, that thing can be absolutely nasty. So what you do for opponents of Kirby is you look for contact in the zone because he has no problem going one, two, three innings with no strikeouts and then trying to crank it up and throw those uh, breaking pitches. But what you have here, though, is – because he operates in the zone so much, you have a Blue Jays team that doesn't swing in the zone as much. They only swing 66.3% of the time. That's under MLB average of 69.5%. The other thing here is when Kirby gets ahead and counts, he can strike guys out upwards of 33 to 34%. Blue Jays have a high called strike rate at 17.8%. Um there's a lot of guys in this lineup, especially with some of the moves that they've made uh, with uh, for, for Toronto, with some of the guys that they've traded away, who did have good zone contact and who also had good contact or low whiff percentage against a slider. So the guys that are going to be in the lineup today, I mean, most of them are fine, but then you go down the the uh, lineup and you do see towards the bottom, you see a lot of whiff potential against a slider, which is one of Kirby's breakaway pitches. You also look at Kirby's outs and they're pretty solidly set at 18 and a half. Um, in some places, there's even 18 and a half juice to the over, which means that he could go close to seven innings. So you give me that that mix. And you also give me um, the the other thing with Kirby is that he, I, as it should be probably not a surprise, he rarely walks guys, only averaging 0.56 walks per game. His walks prop is set at 0.5, meaning I don't even know if he's going to walk one guy today. So you factor all of those things into play and a team that takes a lot in the zone. And you also give me an over 
of uh, on Bet Rivers, it's actually even money. It's minus 102 on one of the main books, uh, with uh, that being FanDuel. So that's good enough value for me. Um, I'm going to bank on how long Kirby can go in this start. And if he operates in the zone this much and the Blue Jays take in the zone that much, six strikeouts, very easily doable. Minus 102 over five and a half. I love it. We're taking over five and a half for Kirby as the third play of today. And our fourth and final play now, we're looking at the Kansas City Royals, 48 and 43 on the year, taking on the struggling Colorado Rockies, 32 and 57. This game's at 210 Central Time. And we're looking at Brady Singer. On the year, Brady is 4-5 and five with a 3.05 ERA, 89 strikeouts, a 1.18 whip, and his strikeout line is only 4.5 here. Are we looking at another over possibility here, Spin? Um, well, it's 4.5 everywhere except for FanDuel where it's at 5.5, and, and you can get that at plus 122, and I'd rather take that. Uh, here, Here's why. I've talked – uh, on this show and and elsewhere about my no under island meaning those are teams that you just don't take unders on uh it doesn't matter who's pitching it doesn't matter what the circumstances and you know i i've i've talked uh, uh extensively about what kind of uh messing with pitchers pitches that uh coors field can do and the atmosphere there but i'm not sure that that's going to apply today um and the reason why is because uh, the singer generates a 48.3% chase contact rate, meaning when guys chase outside the strike zone, that's way below pitcher average of 57.9%. It makes sense because his most off thrown pitch is a slider. So he's one of the few pitchers in major league baseball who does not lead with either a fastball or uh, a sinking fastball or a cut fastball like Corbin Burns does. So he actually leads with a slider. And there are there is a group of pitchers that do that. Um, they're, they're, they're rare, but they're out there. And when you lead with a whiff pitch like that, which he gets a 35.9% whiff rate, which is way of, which is pretty significantly above average. Uh, this is a Rockies team where when they swing, they miss. And what they do swing at is breaking pitches. They have a 36% uh, percent swing rate outside of the zone. That's one of the worst in baseball over the last two weeks. It's actually one of the worst in baseball over the entire season. And they also swing 73.6% of the time in the zone, which is also above average. Now you think, okay, they swing that often. That's that 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 might mean like under, right? Oh no, no. Uh they when when they swing, they miss. They have league average for swinging strike rate is 11.1%. Rockies are all the way up at 14.7. That's last in baseball. Uh they have the highest swinging strike rate and the lowest called strike rate in MLB. You can probably guess what that leads to. You go down the lineup and you just look at whiff percentage, even just to the slider, and it's pretty outrageous. Um, they have guys that whiff to a slider upwards of 45, 50% of the time. Um, I, I there, There's just way too much whiff potential in here. There's not really a lineup that they can put out there. Uh, even one with Charlie Blackman, who is their uh, KG veteran who leads off, who is actually a very high contact guy. But there's not really a lineup that they can put out there where I can say, OK, like six strikeout, five, six strikeouts isn't doable. So, yeah, you can play the over four and a half if you want. It's super juice, though. Minus 160. I don't even like that. I'm fine making the official show play over five and a half at plus 122 right now. On FanDuel, I suspect, I suspect, um, without knowing what the Rockies lineup is going to be, because the bottom of their lineup, because they're they're so bad, the bottom of their lineups, especially on a moving day, can be really, really bleh. Um, it can be guys that that you've never heard of before. So um, if 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 that's the case, I suspect that all books will move to a five and a half, and they'll probably move to a five and a half juiced, to be quite honest with you. So um, I mean, if they're going to put guys like Nolan Jones and Brenton Doyle and Michael Toglia, and if you haven't heard of these guys, I don't blame you. So, um, there, there, there's just way too much whiff potential here. So, uh, if your book doesn't offer it yet, I might take a small shot on an alt over of six plus strikeouts, but that is the official line right now. Official play as well over five and a half.
I love it. We're giving them a plus money play. Get this one in soon, and we expect the line to be moving any second now. That's going to wrap it up. I will do a quick summary of all of our plays. We're taking all overs. Over Rodriguez, six and a half. Over Cease, six and a half. Kirby, over five and a half. And then Singer, if you want to pay the juice, four and a half. But officially, we like five and a half. Mm -hmm. That'll be it for our four plays. As I mentioned at the beginning, if you'd like to qualify for the $40 giveaway, all you got to do, number one, subscribe to the channel. Number two, comment four and oh, give us the good vibes, baby. And number three, like the video. We are due for a sweep. We've gone back to back three and one days. We're excited that Spin joined us again today. I feel like we're going to get the sweep. Let's get it. Let's go.